Alberta Lund was born in Longmont, Colorado in 1914. Her father, Albert Lund, had left Sweden 20 years earlier to marry and settle in the grasslands of Colorado's eastern slope. My father was a, was a farmer and he raised uh, uh, alfalfa and uh, uh, wheat and then um, sugar beets. Alberta and her older sister Lorraine grew up working alongside their father. They helped him at the harvest and cared for the cattle which won awards at the Denver Stock Show. At age 12, Alberta's sewing skills won top honors at the Colorado State Fair, and she appears in their 1927 winner's portrait. The family could not afford higher education for everyone, so when Lorraine went off to college, Alberta went to work. Alberta was working in the Woolworths uh, 5 and 10 cent store in Longmont, Colorado, and Jim came in, I don't know, just for shopping for something, and I think he was kind of taken with Alberta. He was a barber. He went with his father down in the next block. And uh, so he would come in and, and uh, he'd walk in one door and then go around my counter and go out the next. And he didn't meet her, but he kept coming back every day for about a week. And he did that I don't know how many times and he finally up, got up nerve enough to ask me if I'd go out. And I said, oh sure, I'll go out. They dated for about a year, then one day, Lawrence Elisha called from Aspen. He was looking for a young barber for the Hotel Jerome. No more cranky old men, he said. Jim took off for Aspen just after Thanksgiving 1936 to give it a try. Aspen was bleak, but this was a golden opportunity. He'd be the only barber in town. Back in Longmont for the holidays, Jim was direct with Alberta. After Christmas, he said, well, I don't want to go up back up there without you. So we were hurried and married on the 29th of December in my parents' home. And the next morning, we came over the pass, and we were the last ones over the pass. We followed the snow plow over. because He was making his last trip. And we got into town, and, and we stayed then that night at the Hotel Jerome, up on the third floor, and for about a dollar a night. I looked out the next morning and out there and the streets weren't paved and they were all just dirt. It was just a mining town. And I said to Jim, well, I know one thing, I'm only going to stay five years in this dump. The Jerome was the center of all activity in Aspen. And Jim's shop was where the bar is now. Soon he knew everyone in town. They settled into life in Aspen, found other young people for friends, and started a family. They had three kids, Sally, Jane, and Tom, who with their father's support, grew up ski racing. He was one of the original uh, members of the Aspen Ski Club. For years, Jim ferried many of Aspen's kids to distant ski races, kept their race times, and scraped up the cash to buy them uniforms. Sally, Jane, and Tom went on to compete in Aspen's prestigious Roke Cup. Jim cut hair for many years, but Aspen had a limited number of heads, and he had a family to support. He said, you know, I've been thinking about maybe I'd like to go into the real estate business. Their first land purchase was the Monarch Building, where they put in a motel. Jimmy had his barber shop and real estate office. A lot of property in Aspen had been abandoned in the quiet years. As Aspen's first broker, Jimmy found that closing a sale was difficult because getting a clear title and finding a loan for the buyer was almost impossible. He was the first real banker here. There was the Bank of Aspen, but, but uh, they were... <laughs> Woody was so scared to lend money out. He just had made so many bad experiences with people just leaving town and leaving their houses behind and the dogs behind. He had his contacts down valley with the old, the old ranchers and the, the farmers down valley who did have some money who were able to loan it out to people in town and he, he secured the financing for different real estate sales through these down valley connections. He, he was a soft-spoken man, kind of droll in his manner and his speech and, and you just had confidence in him when you, when you sat down and talked to him. Quietly in the forefront as a community leader, 
Jimmy also served terms as exalted ruler of the Aspen Elks Lodge. As Aspen grew into the 1960s, it became obvious to Alberta and Jim that the schools needed to grow also. The school was a bit overflowing and, and uh, Jim said, well, uh, they just need to need a new school. And Jim and Alberta, after talking about it, decided the only place that they could find to put a new school uh, would be right across the road from them on Maroon Creek Road. There was quite a bit of property across there and they were willing to donate that to the uh, to make a new high school. When Aspen needed a replacement for the rundown public pool a few years later, Alberta and Jim stepped up to the plate again. Jim and Alberta decided to donate some more land for the public swimming pool, a new public swimming pool to be built also up Maroon Creek. Jim wasn't interested in having the new pool named after him, but local officials prevailed. They never wanted credit for uh, what they had done, what they were able to do. They were just, it was part of their daily lives and uh, they just kept trying to contribute to this town. In the mid 50s, Alberta became a volunteer at the thrift shop. She retired after 28 years, but after Jim passed away, she returned to work alongside her daughter-in-law, Carolyn Moore. Here she is, you know, 86, and she's working every other Thursday with us, and I'll tell you, it's hard work. <laughs> Alberta will describe her job simply as the hangar lady. Her willingness to take on mundane chores reflects on her devotion to the thrift shop and her fellow volunteers. Uh, since Alberta has started working at the thrift shop in 1956 and for the years that she worked there, the thrift shop has donated into the Roaring Fork Valley $1,368,000. Well, I think if you, re if you receive something here, then I think you should give something back. The Roaring Fork Valley has seen good fortune over the years, largely due to dedicated residents like Alberta and James E. Moore. Their quiet support of the community for 60 years has created a lasting legacy. The Aspen Hall of Fame salutes Alberta and James E. Moore.